The internet, smartphones, apps have all had an amazingly positive impact on readership and the demand for news content. More people are reading more hard news than ever. The major tech platforms are incredible distribution systems and could be an answer for news publishing rather than a problem. But we need to get to a solution where they can help deliver more resources for journalism rather than draining them away. Without investments in local news, we quite possibly would never have heard of Larry Nasser or Jeffrey Epstein or the water crisis in Flint. Reporter Julie K. Brown from the Miami Herald just won a Polk Award for her landmark reporting on the Jeffrey Epstein case, and specifically the efforts by his multiple child sex abuse victims to try to get justice in his case. Average resident won't notice any won't. difference. Right. My water's been brown since the switch. The most dangerous thing is not having lead in your water. The most dangerous thing is having lead in your water and not knowing about it. We invest in our communities by investing in quality journalism. The kind of journalism that helps to right wrongs and solve problems, as well as celebrate all that is good in the communities we serve. Journalism is not inexpensive. We spend a lot of money to hire journalists with deep knowledge of the issues and places they cover. And we spend a lot of money to defend citizens' right to open government and access to public records. Of course, many of our readers see our content on Facebook and Google. But I don't think they realize that when they engage with our content there, it's the big platforms who are getting paid, not us. I honestly think our readers would be outraged if they understood that, because I know they care about and value their local news. By the way, Google and Facebook know that too, which is why they want our content on their platforms. It's time to work together, big tech and news publishers, on a fair deal. Over the last year, Facebook and Google have generated revenues of about $60 billion. Uh, over the last several years, uh, the, the revenues for, for news publishers is down about $31 billion. So you're seeing this shift of all of the revenue, or a big part of the revenue, to these two large technology platforms. And they occupy such a big dominant place in the marketplace that they essentially dictate to local news publishers and content producers the terms of using their content in a way that is making it impossible for them to survive. It used to be that journalism around America was largely supported by advertising dollars. We created the content, we distributed that content, had the audience, and were able to broker that then to advertisers. Along came the internet, and particularly more recently, the power and the beauty of the distribution models that Facebook and Google created. Facebook and Google are able to monetize their distribution of our content to where today, you know, nearly 80, 85 cents of every dollar in advertising digitally goes to one of those two platforms. And that essentially erodes the ability for us to monetize our own content to help pay for our journalism. We simply can't allow and afford any longer for us to do the work and invest in the journalism to have the platforms distribute it and get all of the monetization for that work. Deep investigative reporting, the kind that really sustains our civic society, requires major investments by news publishers. There's a lot of discussion these days about the crisis in American journalism. Our business and profession face so many supposed crises, it can be hard to keep track. But arguably, the most severe crisis is at the local level, and we really should be focusing on that. An estimated 1,300 communities have lost news coverage altogether, becoming what are called news deserts. It was announced this week that you're both co-sponsoring a piece of legislation called the Journalism Competition and Preservation Act. Why are you joining forces on this issue and what exactly are you trying to accomplish? Well, this legislation will create a safe harbor, really an opportunity for local journalists, online publishers, uh, to band together for purposes of negotiating with the two large technology platforms. It grows out of a recognition that we need to do something to give local media, local news publishers, the ability to survive. You know, that we've seen uh, a significant decline over the last decade of about 45% uh, of the jobs in the newspaper industry. 
Facebook, Google, these are great disruptive platforms that have been there and changed really the way a lot of us get our uh, content and our news. But the question is, how in that disruption did we take what was existing and has it made it unfair or is it at least less competitive for those that don't have that access but could if we gave them a, an antitrust exemption, if we gave them that ability. That's why this bill for me was a first step to say, let's see if we can uh, bring fairness and especially to our smaller, our local papers, our regional papers to say, let's at least give them the ability to band together so that they can work to get paid and get their ad revenues from stuff from their content, which I value greatly. Intellectual property is something we don't talk enough about, frankly, in our Judiciary Committee, because that is our economy. That is the basis of our new uh, thoughts, that we got our Googles and our Facebooks and our Twitters and our local papers and our national papers. We aren't asking for the government to save us or or even for the government to regulate or change the platforms. We're just asking for a fighting chance for news publishers to stand up for themselves and create a sustainable digital future for journalism.